In comes a question that I get pretty regularly. Actually, the the one of the comments I get the most across all my videos, all the different channels where I post, is, "Hey, what mic is that?" I've gotten that. I mean, it, hundreds of times, if not thousands, probably hundreds. Um, what's interesting to me is I get that. I've gotten that question really since the beginning, and the microphone in this position has changed at least a half a dozen times. Um, currently, I'm not even going to answer what mic it is, but I've had a couple different Presonus mics in this position. The PX1 was here for a really long time. I've used the the Presonus PD70, which mine's all beat up now. Uh, I've put so many different mics in this position, and the question comes in all the same. What mic is that? It sounds amazing. So that's a big, big takeaway, by the way, before we even dive into showing you how I mix my voice. Don't assume that any piece of gear is going to just suddenly magically change the way you sound. I sound like me regardless of the mic that I choose. I'll mix it differently. Different mics will need a different EQ, for example, uh, maybe. But the mic doesn't fundamentally turn my voice from like sounding like this and then I change the microphone and suddenly I sound like this, right? That's not that's not the case. Now, I know we all kind of know that on like a... A high level, we get that, but then we it's easy to fall into that trap. You see, oh, that person has this microphone and they sound amazing. Ergo, if I get that microphone, I'll sound amazing. Maybe, maybe not. If you sound amazing, then just slap a microphone in front of you and you'll still sound amazing. So I know this is, sounds like I'm just trying to compliment myself. I had nothing to do with the way my voice sounds. It's just the way it sounds coming out of my face. When I occasionally meet people in real life who've watched a lot of my videos, they'll say, oh my gosh, that's what your voice really sounds like. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, this is what I sound like. I've got, my dad has this deep, deep bass, baritone voice. I got that voice maybe a little bit higher. Um, and I have kind of this, I don't know, I have this, this kind of telephone voice. So uh, voiceover voice, whatever. Uh, point being, the the microphone is going to capture what you sound like. So just get a mic. As long as it's not crappy, the mic's not the big difference. So that said, the question comes in from Charlie Bravo 887. Can you do a video on how you mix your regular speaking videos like this one? I'm sure the main reason your voice sounds great is because God gave you a great voice. I will second that. But uh, meaning I didn't have anything to do with it. I was just born this way. But I'm guessing you also process it too. I want my speaking voice to sound as good as possible, but I don't have a deep resonant voice like you. Thanks for all you do. So yeah, the deep resonant voice thing, that's something that's that's fine. But think about all the different, like think about all the movies or documentaries you've watched where they have someone vo voicing over that thing. If it was like James Earl Jones all the time, you might not, it might get old, right? Like that big, deep overly dramatic voice, right? He's fantastic. I love James Earl Jones, uh, RIP. But the, 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 it's not like they only the only people who get that kind of documentary voiceover work are people with big, boomy voices. It's just voices that work, right? There are plenty of like, or like commercials is probably an easier one. You hear all sorts of famous people voicing over a commercial. They don't all have big, deep voices. Some of them do, a subset of them do, but a lot of them don't. So you don't have to have a certain type of voice to get good at mixing your voice, um, the only piece of suggestion I will give is if you can project a little maybe more than you're comfortable with, that can help with really projecting confidence as well as like actual projecting volume out of your mouth, which helps. Um, so here we are in Studio One. I'm going to go through my mixing process. My mixing process for spoken word, or you might call it voiceover, is shockingly simple. Um, and I'll show you that. I'll show you that process now. So here is a raw recording that I recorded just before uh, shooting this video. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video. I'm going to talk about how... Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video. I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. So the primary thing I'm thinking about is I got to get the voice volume up. If this is going to be a podcast or a video, this is the raw recorded with nothing on it. And if I move my fader down and set my system up to the, the, the volume that I normally listen to, final mastered music and videos, my voice comes in about this loud. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix. It's a little on the quiet side, right? It needs, it needs a little bit of oomph. And so a lot of people might think, oh, it needs compression. Uh, no, it does not. It needs a limiter. I can't remember the last time I used compression 
on a spoken word. And that includes rap, by the way. Um, so I'm going to grab our limiter and put it on my mix bus. And I'm going to use it to increase the the volume of my voice just into the limiter. So the limiter, I'll do it with a fast release or a fast attack, and I'll go pretty quick on the release too. Um, something like 100 milliseconds is fine. But all I'm going to do with this limiter, my right now there's a vocal track. It's going into my main mix. There's nothing else happening. This is, by the way, the way that I do mastering as well. I'm going to set the, the meter on this limiter to K14, which means I basically want this voice to get up to this level into the from where the green turns into yellow, and I want it to kind of stay there. If it drops down below here, that's not loud enough. Up to the yellow is about right. So I'm going to do that now. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice. So I want like the parts down here that got pretty quiet, I want those up. So we're going to keep pushing up the gain until that happens. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice so that's dropping below a little more. Let's push it a little bit more. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. That's pretty close. It's 9.99. Let's just go to 12 and see what happens. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. To me, that's pretty much it. Now, what a lot of people do, a lot of people when they use a limiter, whether it's in mastering or any other scenario or on their mix, they'll they'll set up the limiter and then they'll adjust how much limiting they do based on or how how high or how loudly they set the limiter based on how much gain reduction is happening. So gain reduction is this thing right here where it tells me when it's limiting. Hey Joe Gilder here in this video I'm going to talk about so it's doing that a little bit, but not that much. It did about Hey Joe Gilder here about 6 dB of gain reduction on my voice. Um but a lot of people will, will I used to do this when I first started mastering. I didn't know what I was doing. And I would go, I would, each song, I would push the volume up until the gain reduction was happening a certain amount. And I'd say, that's good. And what happened is all my mixes, all my masters were different volumes. Because every song has a different amount of like peaks from a snare drum and things like that. It's going to have a different amount of gain reduction. There was no consistency throughout. And I felt completely lost. Um, I'd master one album and it'd be too loud. Another one would be too quiet. And then within the album, from one song to the next, the volumes would be weird. I didn't know what was happening. It's because I was using gain reduction to measure volume. That's dumb. Use a volume meter to measure volume. So I use the when I mix, I use K20. When I master, I use K14. And I'm trying to, or you could even use K12 for spoken word, perhaps. And I'm basically just trying to get the bulk of the mix to, to raise up over this zero mark. And then most of it to happen above that. Not way up in the red always. That's too loud. But also not living way down below this zero. So that's what I've done here on this voice. We can see it again. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. And I think if we could probably come down. Maybe I think the 10 dB was actually pretty good. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. So intros, I tend to talk a little bit louder. Let's split the difference. Um, because when I start to back off and kind of just talk the normal volume for the video, I still want it to be up around that volume. So we're going to set it to 11 gain. That feels great. Okay. So that's the first step is I get the vocal up to the volume that I want it to be. And the next step is I bring in EQ to shape the tone a little bit. Now, this microphone, one of the keys is you want to get the microphone close enough to have a nice full sound, but you don't have to be right up on the microphone, especially if you're doing video. For me, um, if I have the microphone right in my face, I feel trapped and kind of claustrophobic. I like to move my hands a lot, as if you didn't notice that already. But I, with the mic in my face, I feel stuck. So with the microphone here, it's probably that far away, about a hand's width, maybe like, I don't know, six inches away from my mouth. Um, and it's kind of point. it's on the side, pointed towards my mouth. And that captures me really well. Now, I can get in here real close, but I've, I set the volume on this such that it's a nice volume at the preamp here. Then I'm cranking things up later in the chain to hit it into the limiter to get it up to a nice volume. Now at this at this distance, a certain, I'll have a certain EQ. If I get really close to the mic, it's going to have a lot more low end because of proximity effect. So it'll probably need a different EQ. This mic is designed for that kind of voiceover. So it tends to be pretty boomy already. Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how... Sounds pretty good, but I may decide I want to tame that a little bit. So I might do... I'll do a high pass filter just in case any plosives get through and hit the mic and make it go, whoa, that big rumble thing. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video. And the next thing I'll do is typically I'll use a shelf. So this is what a shelf, well, that's, that's not a shelf. This is what a shelf looks like. 
that's a little aggressive, um, where it's taking everything below this frequency and boosting or cutting it. So I'll usually find something around 250 or so and just let that be like my low end meter or my low end EQ. So there's a little bit too much here. So I'm gonna pull that down just a smidge. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. There's actually a fun trick you can do here. Roll that low end off for a second and then find wherever the kind of gross, weird mid range is. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. Hey, Joe Gilder. <sighs> Sounds gross. Let's pull that down. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video. I'm gonna a lot clearer. Now we bring that low end back in and find the right amount of low end for the voice. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video. I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video. I'm going to talk about final piece um, is there's almost always, at least on my voice, there's an upper mid range thing. This <clears throat> upper mid thing, usually around 2.6 K or so. Um, my, my, my pro EQ is actually defaults to a narrow cut at 2.6 K. Here's what that frequency sounds like. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. And so let's just see, is that the right frequency for this specific thing? It might be a little bit higher. There's an annoying like eh, eh, in my voice. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. Yeah, it's more like up around, up around 3.5 K or so. I need to pull that down a little bit. Got to be careful because you can make the voice sound dull, but I need to kind of take the edge off a little bit. It'll sound a lot smoother if I can pull some of this down. So let's see what happens. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. Yeah, that sounds just a little less annoying, a little less eh coming through. You'll notice I did basically one, two, three, four cuts and no boosts. The boost was the volume at the limiter, um, but I just cut the excess low end. I cut, dialed in the warmth using this shelf, pulled out some mid-range that was gross, pulled out upper mid-range, and now I think this sounds delightful. Hey, Joe Gilder here in this video, I'm going to talk about how I mix my own voice for my videos. And that is essentially literally what my voice sounds like. Now, I will tell you um, the way I do it, I use a Studio Live mixer. So I have this EQ setting essentially on the mixer so that my voice sounds like this going in. I actually push the volume on the fader on the mixer to achieve that plus 10 that I showed you before. And then there's a limiter that everything that I record goes through, both my voice and any music. And that's where the final limiting happens for my voice. So all those specifics are beyond what I wanted to show here. This is how I would do it if I was mixing a podcast. Um, or video audio in Studio One. This is the process. EQ into a limiter, done. No need to do a bunch of extra stuff. If you need a de -esser, I guess that could be a possibility. Um, if your voice isn't as as thick or the recording isn't as thick as mine, you may find a different setting here. You may not do any of this. You may boost a little bit to give it a little bit of extra warmth that maybe isn't there to begin with. But if you want to screenshot these settings, this is at least a good starting point for you for your spoken word, uh, voiceover mixing, and then throw that into a limiter at about 10 dB of gain reduction or so, or 10 dB of volume. Don't worry about the gain reduction. Just get it nice and loud. You're off to the races. Thanks for watching. See ya.